Hello, I'm Ozzy Villa, and welcome to episode 92 of Raise the Halt, our final episode with Aston Villa. It's bittersweet, this really, really is, but it is Stoke at home. It's the final day of the season, and if we look at the Premier League table, we've already won it. A win today, and we go to 100 points, avoid defeat, and we are invincible. Obviously, 100 points is the target, isn't it? We really want to get there, um, but a draw just to avoid defeat get the invincible season as we leave that would be nice so more than just a stoke game today of course we're going to wrap up not just the season we're going to obviously do that have our end of season awards also have our goal of the season contest so be sure to check out my twitter at aussie villain for that at the end of the episode um on twitter you can vote for your favorite goal i uh, will also wrap up our time at villa um we'll have a look at what we think is perhaps our best team um of the time we've been here we have been here for what six seasons now i think it was 2018 we started wasn't it so uh so it's been a long time we've come a long long way from the championship to european champions um but yeah so we'll go back and we'll look over all of that but first of all it's invincibility so it's 16th Stoke in the league, and this is the final Villa team we put out. You'll see here Golini has picked up an injury, so he's out. Van Drongelen as well picked up a knock, um, so he's also out of this game, unfortunately. But this is the team we're going with. Pereira in goal. Mings, Kone, Magdanelli, and Stamankovic across the back. It's Lima, Deli Ali, and Luis Felipe in midfield. It's Hans Daly. It's Callum Mosley uh, down the wings. It's the big Aussie Jordan Cameron up top. And on the bench, you can see we've got uh, Josh Crampton and Zelo. We'll hope to bring them on. So at the end of the game, uh, we'll hopefully have our three academy products named after you guys on the field. Uh, we also have Walter Gonzalez, of course, forever the hero with the hat trick against Real Madrid in the Champions League final. All right, so we can see the way Stokes loading up here, or lining up, I should say, not loading up. Um, slightly defensive. It's similar to the Manchester City formation, um, and City have had some decent results against us. Now, Rebrov is saying we should challenge the team to pick up where we left off. We did, of course, leave off with a very convincing win over Liverpool. Um... I think if we can go a passionate, give the fans a performance they're expecting here. Actually, no, let's go with, let's give the fans something to smile about on the end of the season. Uh, then we'll give them some calm faith as well. Uh, it's our final game pre-talk, uh, pre-match team talk, which is, yeah, it's getting a little bit emotional over here. All right, come on. We are going to miss those fans, aren't we? It's going to be tough. Uh, of course, the new club, though, will have new fans. We'll have new songs, I'm sure, as well. Um, so it's all something to look forward to. But let's see what we can do here. It's just the kickoff highlight, so unlikely to lead to much. But Mings has won that ball. Can it lead to something? No, it cannot. But here we are several seconds later. And Mings into Lima. Lima to Luis Felipe. To Delhi Alley. Nice ball in. Just not quite on the same wavelength as... Uh, I'm assuming that would have been hands daily. Stamenkovic, Mosley with a flick on, not quite decent defending there. Mosley may have been offside. He's not. It's Felipe. Oh! In front of the hold and less than a minute in, we are one nil up. Nice little flick on for Mosley that was, wasn't it? it was well defended. But this, of course, now means two goals. I mean, it looked like it took a deflection, didn't it? Um, but two goals are needed now to deny us our invincible season. As things stand, we are going to hit the 100 points as well. Another corner. Felipe to knock it in. It's there. It's Jordan Cameron. No, it's not quite. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. It's Deli Alley to take it. Actually, can we change? Oh, too slow. I was going to see if we get Callum Mosley to take that. Just a little bit slow on the mouse. All right, come on, Deli. We know we've had some penalty traumas of recent episodes, but Deli Ali! Well, that is surely enough. Two minutes in, sorry, six minutes in, two goals up, and it looks as though, touch wood, we are going to be leaving on a high. I'm not sure if this game means anything to Stoke, actually. I should have checked. They are 16th in the league, so they're down there, but I'm, I have a feeling uh, that, they're, that they're fine because Fulham were already down. They were quite a ways away. Um, I'm not sure if it means anything to them. I should have checked. That's, uh, that's my bad there. Callum Mosley picked up a bit of a knock. It looks like he's going to be okay, though. Uh, so just the two goals for the two highlights, really, isn't it? Um, let's give them some encouragement here. 
just get into half time. If we can get into half time at two nil, um, that should be that should be good. We haven't had it all our own way. Fifty percent of the ball. Uh, we've scored from our two shots on target. They have had five. So yeah, it's not uh, it's not all our way, but two nil is very comfortable at half time, isn't it? Arsenal absolutely pounding Liverpool too there. Um, so let's give it a... We'll give it a that means nothing. Um, we'll keep going for the second half. Uh, and then some individual team talks here. This is probably a good time to quickly mention as well. In real life, we are going to Wembley. That is going to be amazing. I'm really hoping I can get tickets for this one. I have trouble getting to anywhere near as many games as I'd like. So I don't necessarily get priorities for tickets. Um, but obviously, I really want to go to this one. I missed the FA Cup uh, final and semi-final, unfortunately. But I had my season ticket the wrong year, apparently. But I think everything is in order here. Let's get back out there. And we'll give this, say, 10 minutes or so to just make sure that they're not going to come out fired up for the second half and we're not asleep. And then we'll look to bring Z Law and Josh Crampton on, I think. Can Callum Mosley track that down? He can. Gets the ball in. Jordan Cameron, no, it's too close to the keeper. So next job, we're gonna we're gonna have to resign after this game, which is just absolutely heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, next job, let me know what you're thinking. I I'm still favouring. Forest did get relegated, so they're going to be in League One. You would imagine that they're going to sack their manager after that. I think I'm leaning towards that. It's a big club. I think it's. It's, it's kind of a little bit like the Villa Challenge, isn't it? Getting a, a club like that back up to former former glories in Europe. Oh, oh it's just past the post. Um, so I think it's a similar challenge in a lot of ways to Villa. Obviously, starting in League uh, One and not the Championship. But, yeah, unless there's sort of major objections, I'm thinking if Forrest is available, we might go for that. Deli Alley, can he... Oh, he's knocked it out nicely for Stemenkovic. Can he pull it back? He can. It's there. It's got to be a goal. <laughs> well, that is surely it now. We are going to be invincible. We are going to get to 100 points. Deli Alley, he looked like he should have shot there, but he's picked out Stemenkovic beautifully. And Cameron, it wasn't the cleanest. It looks like it was uh, daily. Did he get that shot blocked or did it? Uh, was it a little pass? Um, but that's 3-0. That's surely the game. Uh, Hans Daly isn't having his best game in any case. So we'll bring Z-Law on for him. Uh, Tyrone Mings, he's been absolutely magnificent for us. We'll give him his leave and we'll bring Josh Crampton on. We still have a sub up our sleeve. I would, I would like to maybe get Gonzalez on. He's... He's been fantastic for us our whole time. For someone we signed on a free transfer, he's up there with our best valued signing. Our best valued signing, I would almost say Luis Felipe, who we signed for, I think it was £85,000. Uh, let's see if we can defend this free kick. It's there, it's a flick on, it's a good header. Not the best defending. We'll just give that a concentrate, just to make sure we're not going to go and throw this away. It's a shame we couldn't have got a clean sheet, but it's not not really a big deal is it a little bit slack marking at the near post but I'm almost willing to chalk that up as a really good header I mean it was a backwards flick to the far post so sometimes you've just got to give them a little bit of credit though obviously from a set piece you'd always like to think that uh, that we could do a little bit better all right so we have one more sub to make Paddy Roberts Gonzalez we want Mosley on the on the field don't we so we'll uh, we'll bring Gonzalez on see if he can clock off. We'll give the big Aussie a round of applause as he takes his leave. There's not going to be many of these players, I don't think, that we could coax down to League 1. I'm thinking we could maybe look at getting Zelaw and Josh Crampton on loan. Unfortunately, I think Callum Mosley's just done a little bit too well. I'm not sure, even if we had the budget to get him down there, that he would want he would want to go. Uh, Pereira knocks it in. Lima's there. Good header clear. Can we launch a counter with Zelaw? Go on, son. Go on, son. He's kept the ball nicely there. He could easily have lost that. Mr. Crampton knocks it long. It's gone over the top. It's not quite there, was it? I don't think Zelo he hesitated a little bit on his run forward. But we still got possession, which is the main thing. Callum Mosley coming deep to get involved. 
back to Luis Felipe. I'll say about Luis Felipe. We signed him for eighty-five thousand pounds, and he's. I mean, he's wanted by Barcelona. He's a Brazilian international player. Um, so I think that's got to go up there. But um, yeah, I mean, Gonzalez has been fantastic. All right, this highlight is going on a little while now. Josh Crampton, what a tackle from Josh Crampton. He's fed Z-Law back inside to aforementioned Luis Felipe. Ali with a first-time pass up to Gonzalez. Just fell apart a little bit there. Kone. Currently hasn't been a bad signing too, actually. That's going on there. Oh my god. That is the game breaking. Let's not throw away a hundred points here, please. What we might do oh we'll we don't really want to see that highlight again, actually, do we? That was I think that was football manager breaking. Um we might just just play it a little bit safer here. We'll go our fullbacks on defensive. And we might just, we'll just put it back to standard, lower it down, stay on our feet, be more disciplined. You guys know the routine with this by now. Just make sure that we're not going to go and throw 100 points away. Uh, it has been an even game, so I don't necessarily think that the scoreline is, is harsh on us or, or Stoke, but... We definitely deserve to be ahead. Callum Mosley, can he top it off? Oh, what a way that would have been to finish our time at Aston Villa. Just over the bar from Callum Mosley. What can we do here? Can we sign off with another goal? Delhi Ali is running at the defence. They're backtracking. They're running off him. Come on, Delhi. He's gone. He's found Callum Mosley. Is that a penalty? What's happened there? It's, oh, it was a tackle. I thought it must have been a penalty. Oh, I would... All right, let's... I'm getting carried away here. I would rather win 3-2 and not have the perfect send-off than, than go and concede a third here. But this looks like it's going to be it. It's farewell to Villa Park, but we farewell it as invincibles with 100 points in the league. What a way to finish. Um... The yeah, second half wasn't great, if we're honest. 6-0 Arsenal did Liverpool. Wow, look at that. But there we go, 100 points. We are invincible. The little achievement pops up there. 38 games, 31 wins, 7 draws, and 0 defeats. And then we see Villains win against Stoke. 3-2, a little bit closer than we would have liked. And But more importantly, Aston Villa finished the season unbeaten. What an achievement that is. And we've even got Luis Felipe praising our achievement there. So that's that's that, I guess. That's it for the season. What we'll do is we'll just come back momentarily for the end of season awards, and then we'll go through what I think has been our best 11 uh, for our time at the club. Okay, so here they are, the end of season awards. You can see Stemen Kovic has been named our Fans Player of the Year with 48% of the vote, which I think is fair enough. Uh, Van Drongelen with 24%. Tyrone Mings, he's been an absolute hero for us, I think, over the course of this, uh, this our time at the club. Uh, he came in third. Delhi Alley, his goal against Fulham uh, is the one that is goal of the season. I'll keep an eye out for that, of course, in the goal of the season compilation to come up shortly. Uh, if you think that's your favourite, of course, you are free to vote for it. Hands Daly, signing of the season, I think that's probably fair. We didn't have too many signings this season, so I think he's probably justified in that. He did come really good for us at the end of the year once he stopped getting all these injuries. And the young player of the season, Luis Felipe, to think he's still 23, what he could go on to achieve for the club. I and mean, we can see our team of the year, Golini in goal, Van Drongola, Magnelli uh, and Kone. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mings and Stemenkovic, Lima, Felipe, Deli Ali gets in with Cameron and Gonzalez. Now, the glaring omission there for me is, is Callum Mosley. I think he probably suffers a little bit from this being the formation. But I, I'd arguably have him in ahead of Gonzalez, I think, this year. I thought he was really good, especially at the start of the year. Now, if we look at the stats, top goal scorer, the big Aussie, Jordan Cameron with 25. Highest average rating, Deli Ali, 7.69 is not a bad average rating. Uh, Stamenkovic, 13 assists was the most. Conrad Lima, 91% pass completion. His passing is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Deli Ali, most men of the match awards. Conrad Lima loves the booking, 17 of them. Uh, and then yellow cards, we had quite a few with one, uh, with red cards, sorry. We had Mings, Lima, Doyle Hayes, 
Adoma Kone, and of course Van Jongelen spreading red cards around the around the team, which is what you like to see, I would <laughs> I would assume. Uh, season review. Uh, well, we know what we won, what we didn't. Unfortunately, we just fell a little bit short in the Champions League, a little bit short in the FA Cup. Both knocked out on penalties. High points. Uh, match of the season: the five nil against Bristol City. I mean, five nil is quite a um, not bad, is it? Uh, and of course, moment to forget the two two against Arsenal. I would argue that that FA Cup game against Everton, when we were stoppage time away from winning, uh, and then to go out on penalties, I think that is probably our low. Uh, obviously, Paris was a little bit of a disappointment as well in the Champions League, but that was a game we didn't necessarily expect to win. Whereas I think I think Everton, we probably expected and should have won that game. This must be a little bit interesting. Where are they now? The eight twenty eighteen, the first team. Uh, we'll let's see here. We know that uh, yet yeah, the next coaching at the club, Golini is still with us, of course, as is Mings. Uh, Andrea Conti is at Juventus. Jose Zar, who someone we signed, is at Much and Gladback. Andre Green is at Newcastle. Connor Horahan and Keenan Davies are at West Brom, and Bjornsson is at Utrecht. Uh, Neil Taylor plays somewhere in what's that? Israel. Matty Virtue. We've come across him, haven't we, at Fulham in the Premier League? Delat is still going. He must be ancient by now at the Dundee United. Elphick, who must also he must he can't be playing still, can he? He is still playing, uh, although at 36, but he's in the under 23, so he's not necessarily in the first team. And then of course Richards, Jill, Hogan, Terry, and Adoma. We don't really care about them, do we? So let's before we before we end the episode and and resign, which is going to be tough to do. Let's have a look at what I think is our best team of of our time at the club. The goalkeeper, I think it it almost has to be Golini, doesn't it? Uh, we had Sam Johnson our first year in the, in the championship, um, but I think ever since then Golini's pretty much been an ever present. So he has to be um, our goalkeeper of our time at the club. If we're looking at our defence, if we're going with the five uh, three two, which we played for the majority of it, I think our defenders Van Drongelen, I think is is a given as is Kone. Um, the third spot in defence. Now Magnanelli's been really good, but we've only had him for two years. Um, if you remember Clement Lengele, we had him for a while, and he was really good, and I almost gave him the spot. But I'm giving it to Tyrone Mings because he, he's been with us from the start. We only paid 1.8 million for him, and he's just never really let us down. He's had a couple of defensive lapses, but uh, usually at fullback, and usually when he's, he's being asked to bomb forward. So I think I think Mings gets in um, as one of the three defenders. So at left back, uh, the reason, or left wing back, the reason that Mings is in the center is because I think Ben Davies is the one because he really took us on a level. If you remember when we signed him, um, he was absolutely brilliant getting down the left for us. And so I think he does deserve that. Of course, we sold him at the beginning of this season. I think it was 40 million to uh, Manchester United. Um, that allowed Mings to play full time. And then, of course, we got Hans Daly as well. Now, on the right, this is a little bit more difficult. It came down basically between Andrea Conte, who the Italian that we had on loan our first year in the Premier League, then we signed him, uh, and then of course we sold him uh, a season or two back, and we got Stemenkovic in. I'm giving it to Stemenkovic only just. He hasn't played as many games, but he, a little bit like Ben Davies, just absolutely took us to another level down that right wing. So we're going to go with Stemenkovic, but Andrea Conte is very, very unlucky. Now in the midfield, um, we're going to go with Mile Jedinak, We've got to remember when we, you know, when we first came to the club. I want to have someone that was sort of there along with Mings for the whole time. Jedinak was an absolute beast, and in our first couple of years in the Premier League, he was of course in midfield when we beat Real Madrid in our first ever Champions League game, three 0 So I'm going to go with Mila Jedinak, and of course he is just the great man, uh, God amongst men, as we as I always said. Uh, and we're going to go with Luis Felipe in midfield as well. Um, he really is just someone who passes the ball really, really well. Lots of assists, good on free kicks only just ahead of Conrad Lima. He's, if we've seen his passing accuracy, 91%, and that wasn't a one-off. He's been doing that season in, season out for us. Um, but we're just going to go marginally with Luis Felipe. Then we come to the front three. They weren't called the Holy Trinity for nothing, were they? We've got to go Paddy Roberts, James Wilson, and Walter Gonzalez. They were absolute beasts for us. Paddy Roberts, um, just ahead of Deli Alley, we should say. Um, I We've played Patrick Roberts more than we've played uh, Delhi Alley, especially in this particular role. Um, I just think Patrick Roberts, there's been games that he has single-handedly won for us, um, playing in that attacking um, playmaker role. And then, of course, uh, James Wilson, he was top goal scorer in the league for a number of years. I think he cracked 100 goals for us. He was just an absolute beast. Unfortunately, this season wasn't his best for us, let's be honest. But I think um, 
we, we did we have him on loan? I think we had him on loan in the championship, didn't we? And then we bought him for what turned out to be peanuts from Manchester United. And I just think he's he has, has to be there. And Walter Gonzalez, he has a statue outside Villa Park, I'm sure. A hat trick in the Champions League final against Real Madrid. Constantly one of our top goal scorers. I think he probably got 20 goals a season for just about every season he was with us. We signed him on a free transfer. So I think Walter Gonzalez has got to be there. Um, if we're looking at players that are unlucky, we had the likes of, of Jordan Cameron. We had Scott Hogan in the early days, who was quite good for us as well. Um, but I just think that, that Gonzalez... He's constantly been there for us, and and uh, I think he is in our best 11 of our time at the club. So that's what I think our best 11 is. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you've been with us from the start, obviously you have a slight advantage over people who have come along a little bit more recently. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. I think if we had all those players in their prime, um, that would be a really, really, really good team. All right, now the time has come. I don't want to do this, if I'm honest. <laughs> but here it goes. Oh, okay. Our time at Villa has come to an end. That hurt. I'm going to be honest. That really hurt. So now let's have a look at job security. And this is what we are looking at. It looks as though, I mean, Liverpool, Manchester United, I don't really want to, to get involved in another Premier League club right now. Um, but we'll come back next episode and we'll we'll have a new club, won't we? So that's it for this episode. That's it for Aston Villa, which hurts my heart. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our time at Villa Park. Thumbs up if you have. Subscribe if you're new because it's going to be a whole new challenge. So make sure you come back Sunday. We'll have a new club. We'll have a look at what we have. We'll go through, hopefully, pre-season. Hopefully, we'll get a job uh, relatively quickly through the summer here. And we'll start a whole new adventure. So as I said, thank you very much for watching. But before we sign off from Aston Villa, here are our goals of the season. Make sure you head over to my Twitter to vote for your favorite. It's at Aussie Villain. But until next time, from a new mystery club, I've been Aussie Villain, and we'll see you then. Take care. of the 23-24 season. Vote for your favorite now on Twitter.